All right, so we're going to kind of go through this. I want to talk a little bit about why you want to use simulation to begin with. Um, but first of all, thanks for stopping by. I see a lot of familiar faces in, in here, uh, even from across the country. So um, it's kind of cool to be here. And thanks for Rob Curran and the West New York guys for setting this thing up. But free tool brought to you by the Army, so the price is right. What I want you guys to focus on tonight is that th this isn't a magic, magic bullet. This is not replacing anything. This is just a supplement to uh, – to work your um, your kids in a little bit different way. It's gonna take some time, it, uh, just like anything else, so getting comfortable with it, um, and just know that you can reach out to support, you can reach out to me. I don't sleep very often, I'm up real early and up real late, so you know you can hit me up pretty much any time and I'll, I'll be there to help you out. That's how much I believe in this uh, technology. So the title of this is Coaching From Home, and obviously it's pretty topical with what's going on. You know, across the country, people are trying to figure out how do you reach the players. So what I'm going to try to do tonight is give you uh, some ideas on how to use this and how people are using it right now, and then a beginning tutorial on how to get started. Um, and just know that this is going to be the, the first one. Uh, hopefully, you guys reach out and as you kind of grow and develop and you go from there. So the first thing is why you want to use simulation to begin with. The biggest thing is the efficiency of it. You know, when you talk about the things that we're going to be able to do with simulation are things that you're already doing uh, with your team. Everybody does walkthrough. Everybody does install assignment. Everyone's watching film. But how many times have you watched that film clip and said, all right, we're going to look exactly like this, except we're going to be on the other hash. The guy's going to be squeezed down. That guy's not going to be there. It gives you the ability to put up exactly what you want. Um, I, I helped Rob Kern with some defensive stuff this past season, and he would say, how do you fit power out? I would literally draw power on the app, text it to him, and say, this is how you fit power. I didn't have to go search for that perfect clip. I didn't have to – and I could send him something that was a little bit better than, the, than a drawing. So efficient use of time. Um, and then in, in the learning environment that we are today, not just the fact that we're stuck at home, but also the, the players aren't used to seeing your back. You know, and, and for some reason, football hasn't – really caught up with that, especially at the highest levels, people are still teaching in, in, in an archaic way. Whereas now it's like, you better do this in 30 seconds. You better do it on their own time. You better do it in an environment that they're comfortable with. Um, and so that's what this does. This puts the reps in the hands of the player and personalizes the instruction, gives you the ability as a coach to personalize that instruction. So, you know, I've been using this for about five years religiously now and what ends up happening is I send out the install in advance and then we're fielding questions as the week goes rather than install day two, install day three, you know, they have it all. And then it's conversation and interaction, but we're able to show those installs from the players, uh, players view. And then the brain activation, I'm going to jump into a different slide here. So the, the science is out there that says, you know, when you look at the brain, when it's doing physical exercise or whether it's, imagining something you know, there's a reason why dreams are so real it's because your brain can't tell that you're not doing it or you're not seeing it you know the brain just says like look at the two things on the screen that's notre dame and gun far that's all the brain's doing you know the brain doesn't tell that you're not there so if you're able to create this over and over again for the player that's walk through as many times as you want to so i could make 50 formations of that you know, in, in three minutes where to get 50 formations from a scout team would probably be near impossible because you'd probably kill somebody, you know, by the 15th play of hurting cats all over the place, you know, and this can be delivered to the player on their phone, on their iPad, you know, in a meeting room all over the place and repeatable and customizable. So I may need one rep and I'm out of the meeting. Somebody else may need 50. What would you do before you know, we had this, uh, this kind of tool that's there. So with that, I'm going to kind of jump in here and let's, let's sort of get after what some of these things that can be done. Um, so the f first thing I want to show you is, you know, while there is a learning curve, it will take some time to get this thing down. It really, you know, can be done pretty easily. You know, just with drawing those lines, there everybody goes you're able to, you know, add labels over the defensive backs. You're able to get rid of the offensive line. You're able to show the routes on the field or not. You're able to jump anywhere on the field and show those exact same things that we're talking about. 
And so all of this is, is controllable. And so when you look at it, you know, from a drawing standpoint, it really isn't as, as daunting as some of those other programs that might be out there. So we're going to talk about how to do all of that stuff. I just wanted to give you an, an idea there. And then I'm just going to show you some examples. And these are some examples that have, are used at the highest level. Um, so th this, I think, is the most powerful thing. Think about a tempo offense. How do you practice that? Well, we created a drill that if you look at the timer bar down here, that ball is going to be snapped in 12 seconds. So imagine your guys in a meeting room having to line up, running all over the place, blast music. It's a great distraction. But it, creating it where, all right, 10 pers personnel is on the field. I'm going to need to set this thing up. The clock is rolling. They've broken the huddle. We're going. You know, this is something that just cannot be duplicated. I know everybody on this call is sitting, like, had, had that conversation of, like, how do you do, uh, how, how do you do tempo offense formation recognition? You know, this is the way you simulate it. You know, they get into squeeze. What happens then? All that stuff. You know, linebacker box reads. This was sent out to the players over text message. And they would just sit there on their phone and say, that's a pull. I'm going. Going left. Guys in the pistol inside the core. Boom, inside zone. I'm fitting here. And when you look at the creation of it, look at what's drawn. Not too much and the power of it that can come off it. And then we go crazy with, you know, you jump into stuff. Think about bunch. You know, I think bunch is one of the toughest things to kind of sort themselves out. You know, you're able to show, you know, one goes behind two. Where is everybody supposed to go? You know, those things that are, that are tough to see, you know, from a coaching standpoint, uh, drawing lines on a chalkboard, now you're supposed to, you can show it exactly how everything's supposed to fit out. You can tell where my bias is. I start with the D stuff, so sorry, offensive coaches. I'll jump over to the offense also. The most powerful thing on defense is formation recognition. Most powerful thing on offense is blitz pickup. And this literally was an NFL training camp blitz pickup. And so it's all double barrel stuff, but this is just rapid fire with the tight end on the right and just going through their calls. You know, if, if you would rather go through it and not have the offensive line there, you know, it's the same drill. Just get rid of the offensive line. You know, so these are the things that can be done. Uh, talk about, you know, reads for a quarterback. So basic Hank stuff. You know, we're going to read the – we want to go to the tightest hook player in two by two. So if you're teaching this, you ask the guy, all right, who's the tightest hook player? Boom, I'm going to the left. Throw in the curl because that guy took it. And you can just rapid fire these reps, you know, boom, tightest hook players to the right. Where am I going? And this can be distributed to your, your, to your players, to your quarterback, whoever it might be. You know, and, and so I hope you guys can see the power of this, that there's the creativity is endless. I think blitz pickup – is is a no-brainer i think formation recognition is a no-brainer but like this is cover three you know showing where the holes in cover three are you know talking front identification you know what a 57 front is you know what the nickel sam is what the nickel will is you know just talking in that language being able to teach through this stuff so the the possibilities are really limitless you know it's just going to be all about coming up with what your process is all right, so that's kind of the that's kind of the quick overview of what can be done here. Um, what I want to do now is kind of go into the drawing details and talk through what each one of these buttons does. So now, like this is being recorded, but this is where you want to kind of take notes. Just the the program of show here, how we're going to take this is I'm going to show you the drawing capabilities, um, and then where I want to go is I want to create a playbook and show you how I would create the playbook from scratch. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's going to be some easy steps. And then we'll get into some, some bigger examples. So the things that are here, this button on the left in the bottom left corner is going to be an important piece. This tells you what is happening. Um, so when it's like this, that right angle looking thing, it, that's how you draw. So if I want to draw on that, I'm going to have this receiver. And then you'll see when I let go of the mouse, a little box shows up. And that's another segment. I can delete anywhere on there and those paths go. I can double click on somebody and their entire path goes. 
Um, and I'll show you how to make curved lines in just a second, but uh, automatically when you draw a line, he runs and he runs at full speed. And we'll change that uh, in just a second. Um, so the other things that happen in here, key pieces, the arrow is edit formation. So this is where you tighten those guys down, you know, getting a nasty split, you know, gun far, whatever, line up your defense and set those guys where they need to be. Okay, the next thing that's pretty important is the pre-play motion, just like post-snap. You can make the different segments. And the segments are important not only to delete things afterwards, but it's also changing the speed. So if I go this way, I, I want to put this guy in motion, and then I want to shuffle him. I can click on this segment, and you'll notice it says route right there. I can now change that to half speed, and I can change it to shuffle. So clicking right on it, now what happens, that guy will go, and he'll shuffle right there. You know, if we have any uh, Michael Jackson fans out there, we can get some moonwalking going. Have some big time. There we go. He moonwalks across. So, obviously, from a uh, defensive standpoint, that's where the path uh, changing is really important. You know, you want this defensive back to backpedal at half speed. We're there that guy goes. And you can get guys shuffling, you guys get guys backpedaling, and then changing the speed that's there. So I'm going to go over telestration uh, quickly, but this is where you can add text. Text here. And what happens when you jump to 3D is that text shows up on the field. And that that's a mode that we'll talk about where it's up in the up in the air, but you turn that off and then it goes down in the field. You know, so that's a good one that will show up when uh, you know when you you want to put notes in there, and I'll show you some examples that are happening with that one. Change of possession, I'm not going to do right now, but this is how you how you throw the ball. All right, so just to kind of highlight again, if you want to change a path, so let's have this this guy backpedal and then shuffle. So I click on the player, I highlight the path, there's a thing that says route in the corner, and then you can change how he moves and at what speed. So now I'm gonna click on this section and I wanna shuffle at half speed. I think it's this guy right over here. And you'll see, there he goes on a back pedal and then he shuffles through. So just a way to kind of give some realism when you're doing some post-snap reads and things like that. Okay, so now the, the icon in the, in the bottom uh, has some good things that are there. The most important thing is line type. So when I, I personally prefer to draw with straight lines, and this is just a click and hold, and when you release, the segment drops. So it's the same concept as, as the other one. And you, what you can do is, you know, you can have straight lines and curved lines in the same thing. All right, so that goes, goes through there. So that right there, this is the, the key piece of drawing. Now there's one kind of like uh, pro tip that I would give you. Um, and, and this is to delay people starting. So obviously when I draw this line, right at the snap of the ball, that guy starts moving. So what I do to kind of get some fits down is let's just say like, get it to like 0.26 seconds, draw just a little path. And then I go back to the beginning. And now what happens is when that ball is snapped, that guy's not gonna move until 0.6 seconds. And then he goes. And I'd always draw the little line uh, so that if I screw something up, I'll, I'll do a bigger delay here. Let's go half a second. I always draw a little line. So now, you know, I can draw, let's just say I come up with the greatest pass fit in the history or whatever, and, but I screwed it all up. I don't have to go all the way back to the beginning and delete this guy. I can just click right here or even here, and that delay is still there. So ball is snapped, and now he starts moving. 
So the delayed path kind of makes some is uh, does some good things to, to go there. So that's that's the the nuts and bolts of the drawing. Um, so it's just like any other program. Get your process down. Get comfortable with it. But this is where it obviously gets unique. Inside of 3D. So first, camera control. So anywhere you click on the field becomes kind of like the focal point. And then you use on your mouse, you know, the roller ball is what zooms everybody in. And then click and holding will get the tilt and the spin. Okay. So like, let's say I just want to go right behind the quarterback and let's just say, I love this view. I can click this camera and then you'll see four different cameras there and I can save that. So now when I'm, I can go all over the place, I jump in that DB's helmet and then I can go back to camera two and it snaps me right back to that, that one that I like the most. So when I have my, when I'm doing my work, I have, you know, a good offensive line camera. I have a good linebacker camera and I have a good free safety camera. And like, I'm able to snap to those right away. You know, so you're just kind of playing around with the, where those are. Double clicking or rolling all the way in will get into somebody's helmet. Okay, now the gear icon in the, in the bottom here, this gives you the ability of what you see. So if you, if you wanted everybody shown, you know, but let's say you didn't want any defensive linemen, you know, it also has the labels. So what's above the, uh, the player's heads. So you can put where the tight end is. This is where you show the routes on the field or not. Um, and jumping back, I want to jump back into 2D because I forgot something that's pretty important. If you click on the wide receiver when you're on draw routes, set player label, you can change that guy's number, which is a pretty big deal. You can also change the route color that shows up. All right, and then you can also get into when you're in edit formation, you can change the stances of people. So get those guys in three-point stances, offensive linemen, you can get them in uh, uh, two-point stances. But what's nice about this is when you go to 3D, you know, so not only is he wearing a 21 jersey, but when you press the label let's, that you want the wide receivers to show up, there's 21. And you think about how powerful that is from an offensive line standpoint, you know, mic identifications, things like that, but also formation recognition. I mean, every team, no matter what level you're at, you know, has a guy that everybody needs to know where they are. And, you know, so there's 21 and he's in blue. You know, that means something. Um, so in the camera, you know, that's going to be an important deal of, of being able to show labels, you know, above and, and below there. So this is a, that really is the, the drawing detail. Like this is the way, this is the way that you draw. Now it's, like I said, it's going to take some getting used to those approach tips of, of the delayed paths are pretty big, um, allowing you to get those guys fitted out properly. Um, and then you'll see some other tools that are in there to help you with drawing. You know, like, for example, I can click on the right tackle and there's something called first steps. And I can make that guy with good animation. I can make that guy pass set. You know, so there's different things that can be done, you know, and it's just going to take a little bit of practice. You know, so I clicked on the right guard. I clicked on the segment and I changed that to pass block. You know, so now he's kicking. So there's just ways that are inside the drawing of things that just take a little time to kind of get comfortable. So, so let's jump into making a playbook. Now, there's, there's a number of different ways to kind of go about this. I'm going to show you what I believe is the easiest way in the, in the playbook screen. So once you get a, an account logged in, you know, you go to your, uh, your team, which I just exited. Sorry. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go into, you know, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we got some Buffalo Bills. You know, we're in Western New York, so we got some Buffalo jerseys. You can go in and change your jerseys. Uh, you can customize based on hex codes and things like that to really get in there. Uh, this is where you edit or manage your users, so add people's accounts. 
but the playbooks is where we want to go here. So when you get in, what we're going to do is we're going to make our base playbook to start. Now there's some example playbooks that you can copy in. You see some of them right here. But what I'm going to encourage you guys to do is go to add new. And we're going to name this. You know, if we have any Texas people in here, you can change the, the hash that you want. I think New York plays on, on high school. Uh, also, if you get, you know, if you just want to draw a seven on seven playbook, you can make seven on seven. But so we're close enough to Canada, we might have some Canadian cats in there. So throw a 12th guy on there and play three downs. Let's go. Uh, but we'll keep this in, in 11, 11 people on a high school field. So I'm creating the playbook. So it automatically comes loaded with, with some of the personnel that's there. So when you see, there it comes. So when you see this, here's our, here, here's our playbook. We're going to load it. And so here's the organization of it. What we're going to do with this first playbook is we're going to set up these first three things. And then that's going to be our book that we copy to make every other book. So we set this one up right the first time. It's going to take you know a few minutes to get it done, but I'm going to show you it really doesn't take that long. Um, then every playbook we make, whether it's a scouting playbook or an install playbook, will always have our information that we want. So the first thing is personnel groups. So it's loaded with empty 10, 11, uh, 21, and 30. So this is where you would go in and let's just take 11 personnel. If you like what these are called, I personally don't, but you can see why people label it like this. This is where you would go in and change the guide to the Y. We're going to change this guy to the Z, change this guy to the F, and you don't have to do this. You could get started right away if you wanted to, but now by changing everybody to get the language that you want, now every 11 personnel formation you draw is going to be the right naming that you want. Don't worry about where they are on the field. We're going to do that later. So you would go through and do the same thing. Let's just do 21 personnel. You know, we're going to make this guy the X, make this guy the Z, and kind of go through there. So you would go through, and my suggestion is, you know, if you're a defensive guy, you're going to make every formation, every personnel grouping you could possibly think of. You know, offensively, you're limited to, you know what you're going to run. Then you click on defense, and it's the same thing. You know, so these are in there as DB, LB, and D line. But you go in there and call, you know, I'm a 4-3 guy, you know, so you call this, you know, the Sam, the Mike, and the Will. Now, this can be changed later on, but if you set this in right, it's going to be, that's going to be the best way to go. So you would go through and change the personnel grouping to be, you know, either, you know, what you call it as your defense or you know, what you're calling it as your opponent, depending on what you're using the book for. Okay, so now in the, once it would, so is everybody good? We have personnel groups, everybody's, we got all of our stuff done. We finished that all the way through. Then we're gonna go into formations. Now it comes loaded with just some examples. What I'm gonna encourage you to do is, is delete those out. So you can delete one by one if you want to, or if you go to edit lists here, you can delete rapid fire. And so why I'm going to delete these, so it's kind of a, a misnomer on offense. Like some people may think like, I'm going to put every formation I want in there. What I would encourage you to do is only make the personnel groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make 11 personnel. And now I could make the exact 11 personnel formation that I want, but we're going to do that later on in the play. So now what I have here. Whenever I choose 11 personnel, I'm going to be – because I'm going to have to fine-tune the, the, the where everybody is anyways. I'm going to have to move the ball to the hash or move the ball vertically, which a lot of people ask, don't you do that in the formation screen? It's no, you don't. So what, we're, what we do is if you just make just the personnel groups and just call it 21 personnel, you'll notice that those guys are changed. but. We're just going to have these guys hanging out. They're waiting for us to tell them where to go. So this is just kind of our guts. We would make each personnel group uh, ready to go. And, and defense is already kind of set out that way. You know, you can see it's just a basic 4-3-4 four, four shell here. 
And, and the reason is because we need to line it up against something. We do that in the plays menu, right, which, which we'll do in a second. So now we've, we've made our personnel groups. We've made each one of our formation personnel groups, both offense and defense. Huddles for defensive uh, guys who are going to use this for form reco, you really want to want to make create uh, your huddles. So all you have to do is, like I said, you're going to do this one time. So I'm just going to call this, this is my 11 personnel huddle. You notice the Y and the H and the F and the Z and those guys are in there. And I, I'm not going to overthink this. You can move these guys around if you want to, but I just made an 11 personnel huddle. I'll just make another one for 21 personnel because we have it. But what you want to do is you want to make every personnel group, but you want to give it a huddle. This is really only applicable to defensive guys, you know, who want to see an offense break in a huddle. From an offensive standpoint, it really doesn't have the, uh, the, the application. So we just did all of our personnel. We did all of our formations. We made huddles for all the personnel groupings. Now we want to, this is our book that's going to be blank but it makes all the other ones. So what we want to do is we're going we're to leave this one alone and we're going to copy it to make every other book. So I'm going to show you how to do this now. So we press the three dots and we're going to call this, I'm just using the zeros because it's alphanumeric. Uh, let's just say week one in, or week one form record. And so now I don't have to worry about changing personnel groupings. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. We are ready to go in, in, in the, the sense of uh, all of our personnel groups in there, what we call each position, it's already done. All right, and I'm going to show you now how, how quickly this can be done. So it, it is plays, this is where you line things up. So the formations, it's just kind of like the guts of the playbook. It's the play section of where you line things up. So to make a play, we're going to go add new. We're going to choose an offensive formation. And again, it's going to be, just a personnel group because we're going to tell it what it is. We'll choose a defense to line it up against. And then your name of it, we can call this, let's just say we want pro twins, Y right. And we'll do gun far. And we can save versus four, three. And hit save. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move to get pro twins where everybody's supposed to be. And then roughly line up where our, our four three is going to be. Now, if you're doing this for formation recognition, it doesn't matter where the defense is because we're going to hide them. So it's going to go. All right. But now what we did was we just made, oops, we need to go gun far. We just made this play. And let's say we want to huddle off of this. We're going to press shifts, add huddle. and then click on the name to exit. And now what we have is we have a play. I'm gonna get rid of the defense just so we can see this. And get rid of those player routes. We have a play with just clicking a few buttons of now they broke the huddle. And it's 11 personnel pro twins. And then you can create this pretty quickly. So let's just say we, we wanna put that guy in motion. Z zoom. So I'm going to copy the play. Everything is going to be the same, including the huddle. We just put that guy in motion. Break the huddle. Here he comes. So from a formation recognition, which is where I encourage people to start, you know, th this is this is, is how easy it can be created. I'm gonna go copy, I'm gonna flip this, and let's just say H exit. And let's move this ball to the hash. Let's shuffle that guy just at the end. and hit save. Here it comes, row twins, 
tailback exits. And then there you go. So we can do the same thing, you know, let's just do it with a different uh, uh, personnel grouping. Let's just say pro I, Y right. And again, we're doing this for offensive formation recognition. So realistically, I may want to click no defense. I don't even have to worry about it. And so our, our blob of a personnel group is sitting right there waiting for us to be told or waiting for uh, them to know where to go. Shifts, oops, add the huddle. And there we go. Now you can do like, I'm just breaking huddles right now. Let's just say for, you know, for your offensive, those offensive guys that are out there, let's just do uh, pro twins versus four, three NCAA blitz pickup. So we're going to choose this. Let's do it at a nickel. So now we're going to do this from a blitz pickup standpoint. So we're going to draw some people. So we have our Z, our F. We need to tell these guys where to go now. And so because you're not fitting everything out, it ends up being pretty quick to, to create. So I can draw this. and get these guys rocking. Creep this guy. Got about 15 minutes, Coach Everett. Okay, cool. I think we're cooking with guests. So now you, you, know, you press save, and now we've created a, something where when we get rid of, if we're just doing this for our offensive line, we're going to get rid of the running back and the quarterback. We'll bring those guys, the defensive guys back in. And I just drew the pressure, but we can draw the rest of it also. You know, you can sit there and say, all right, how are we fitting this thing out, you know, from a pass protection standpoint? You would sit there and call the play out and say, you know, we're going to write, run – shot Robbie 84 Ohio and how does this fit out against that pressure and it's the same idea you can copy this over and over again you know if you if you like everything about it or you just want to flip it mirror the play now you have two of them just coming from opposite sides so the reason I'm showing it to you this way is you want to I think blitz pickup is the most important thing for the audience uh, offense, uh, formation recognition, and you just try to draw as little as possible. You know, keep this thing where it's manageable, it's repeatable, and then as you kind of go through, you're gonna you're gonna fine tune your process. So now we have uh, we have this we have our plays. So let's just do the defensive one first. We have all of our plays in. We're ready to go against these guys. I'm gonna go to the drill mode, and drill mode is essentially just a cut up. So you think about just a, a cut up that you would have. So it, what I've done for different teams is I put in their script. So they'll, they'll send me, I literally do this for an NCAA team right now. They send me their uh, 15 play script for blitz pickup and I put it in. And then it goes right in here and, and, and they get after it. So we're gonna add the name of it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna do the defensive one first, but we'll just choose our plays that we want. You can add notes here. You see where it says add note. And you can slide this up and you can, you can type information, you know, and say P and 10, you know, minus 35 and give information, give huddle calls. But so in the drill mode, this is your, your uh, playlist. You can add plays more than one time. So the important pieces are, into the gear icon when you're setting it up. So play information, this says the play at the top or where it hides it. Kind of depends on what your purpose is for it. Auto play, pretty self-explanatory, whether it's on or off. Um, it'll play right through or you'll have to wait till it, to advance it. Um, and then if you have auto play on, there's some delay things that are involved. 
to kind of give you some time to go. Preview play before shifts, always leave that off. Um, but, but 3D settings, this is important. So if I'm doing uh, formation recognition, I want the defensive guys hidden. So now the, the, this entire uh, drill, no one will be showing on the defense. And then and let's just say I want to know where the tight end is. So now it's going to say Y above his head. Um, you can put on some of the other things that are there, showing player routes, but these are the things that I find most beneficial. So then the next piece that's, that's most important is putting the camera in the right spot. So you go to set drill, hit 3D, and it's going to be kind of a ghost picture, but this is where you would, you know, if you have something saved, remember what camera two was, you know, or you have a, a picture that, you know, a linebacker view that you really like, but I'm going to show you a way to kind of cheat it. So here, I like that view. That's us. We're going to press save. All right, and then we're done. We're going to press save on this. And now we have uh, something that when we press start, all right, there's the information. I can use the arrows on the, uh, the computer to start and stop. But now we have that huddle. And it's going through. Notice it says test at the top instead of the play. Notice the play where the camera goes with you as the, cam as the play goes to the hash. There's our tailback exit, you know, and, and kind of going through there. And let, let's just say we kind of have a free safety view right there. We can take this, copy it, and call it, you know, LB, for example, and we can keep the same exact drill. Oops. We're going to edit this thing. We can make the same exact drill, just now we can make it from inside the box. So it's same play, same everything, but now we just made two different versions of it. So now it's right on top of it. If you're just talking about guys who are worried about the core, guys that are sitting right there, you know, it's the same place. So you can rapid fire this stuff and send this out to your linebackers, send the other one out to uh, – out to. Um, you know, the, the secondary, whatever. And you can still adjust the camera at any time. It just snaps right back to that camera that you saved in there. So that's the, that's the drill creation. And, and so what I wanted to do was get back to the PowerPoint here and kind of talk through some things and show you some examples. So getting simulation, this shouldn't necessarily take over what you already do. The idea here is to get it merged in with the things that you are already doing. So whether you're using PowerPoint or I'll show you some things with Huddle, you know, you're able to export from this the video and merge it in there. We can put it into, into video like I, I showed you. So I'll show you a, a PowerPoint of – slide this over. All right, we can see that right there. So this right here, this is a traditional drawing – you know, standard uh, playbook type of deal. But think about motion checks. How do you write down motion checks in a playbook? You know, what I did was I just made this drill and copied it through, you know, when uh, Field Eagle Tasty Freeze is called, this is what happens when it's change of alignment, you know, change of surface, FSL. And so you're able to digitize those things that would traditionally use squigglies and things like that. You know, so you're able to take a PowerPoint and, uh, and, and merge that thing in there. Um, you can also take huddle. Here's one of those formation recognition drills just now loaded into huddle. So boom, you go, you're able to pause it a hey, full snug. You know, what are our checks? You know, it's a, it, it, it's a nasty split by Y and he's outside of them. What does that mean as opposed to over here? You know, and you're able to kind of talk through and, and there's guys on, on Twitter now that are posting up Zoom meetings that they have just like we're doing right now. And they're going over formation recognition exactly like I'm doing it right here. And I'm going to show you how to export this, uh, this in a minute. Actually, I have it right here. So uh, Coach Tolly is a good follow, but, you know, so take a look at this.
You hear those guys? And so that's, you know, that's just the ways to export from the application to, to things that you already use. Here's something I did in Memphis where I coach tight ends there. All these are screened. These are just uh, uh, snips, which if you don't know about the snipping tool, the snipping tool is the greatest thing on your computer that you maybe don't know about. But it, uh, it's, a, it's a snipping tool. Here it is right here. You can just go ahead and grab this. And now it's, you can copy it, paste it into anything really quickly. And so I just copied these. We made it into Google Forms. And so the question is, uh, talk through Blue 37 Power against this look. You know, so where are the guys going? You know, we're going to trade this thing back to M. You know, and then I was able to tell what their answers were. You know, this is all before the meeting, but it was the picture of it that really made it, uh, made it that powerful. And then text messages. So when I was coaching linebackers at, at Bridgewater, I would send the beginning of a play through a screen record, and I would just send the beginning of the play, and the players would have to respond with a text message as to what they were thinking, what they might do next, all those other things. And then they would go, and it would just have to, like, build on top of each other. So, so I'm going to show you – so what I'm going to show you is this is how you can screen record. So it's built into the app. So I just have my phone here. Just cancel my login. So I'm just on whiteboard mode right there. I'm just going to go zoom in wherever. But you hit the I, hit video, and then start record. So let me do that again because you probably didn't see it. So I'm going to hit the I, hit video, and then start record. And now you can zoom wherever, play whatever you want stop record and it just goes to your photos there's my deal right there you press play and it zooms in now you're able to text to people you can send it to your computer on email you know whatever you want to do you know but that's a pretty huge thing that uh you know gets uh gets people gets people going Okay, so the, the next steps that you want to take here are getting comfortable with it. Like turn this thing on, download it, get your coaches signed up on it, get comfortable and figure out how you want to use it. Like I said, uh, formation recognition for defense, blitz pickup and, and route recognition for offense. But then find out how you would want to use it, uh, where you can see it, it being possible to repeat and lay in a foundation. My first year using this, that's all it was, was formation recognition. Nobody moved. And then the next year, we moved to the next thing. And I'll be honest, I went over a hump where it was actually too much work, and we had to kind of dial it back. Um, you know, we were making things that were awesome, but it just wasn't efficient uh, in, in terms of maximizing that benefit for the player and then the efficiency for time. And then use this as support. So uh, the next slide here is, is my social media and email. Um, and then the Go Army Edge stuff as well. You know, we try to stay pretty current with what's going on, um, you know, and, and put some good things in. We used to draw up a bunch of the things that were happening on, uh, you know, Saturdays and Sundays. Unfortunately, that's not happening now. But, um, you know, I, I will tell you, I will answer your question. I will get on, you know, a Zoom call with you. I'll walk you through this because I believe in this uh, technology and what it can do. But it's going to take, going to take a, a little bit of time investment to find out what your process is. But if you do, you know, this is the future of coaching. You know, coaching from home or not, you know, this is going to be a part of coaching as we go forward no matter what. Coach, we did get a uh, – uh, we do we gotta, a I, I see him there, Rob. So the, there. the first question is uh, how do you export – to the drill. So when I, when I showed how to record on my phone, um, what the way that I export, uh, the, the file is I, I will make the, the drill on the computer, set the camera, the whole nine, like I'm going to work on the computer. Then I go to my phone and just screen record on my phone. And then once you have the drill recorded on your phone, you can email it to yourself or, or any of those things um, and then load it in through huddle because it comes out as a, you know, an MOV file or a, a, a MP4 file. Um, 
but yeah, that the screen record from your phone is going to be the easiest. You can do screen recording from the computer also. I just found it's a little easier to do it from the phone and then get it back to your computer. Um, then there's another one that says, uh, show how to backpedal. I can do that real quick, Rob. Changing the speed of everybody. So I'm just going to go to this whiteboard mode just to kind of go through there quickly. So if I want this guy, I'm going to draw this line. Let's just say I want him to shuffle out and then backpedal and then open up and run. So I select the player I want. I click somewhere on the path that turns orange. And then this thing in the corner says route. So I wanted that guy to, I just blocked it. I want that guy to shuffle to the right. And let's do it at three quarter speed. Then this one, I wanted to backpedal. And then this one by default, it automatically runs. So now what's gonna happen is, I think it's this guy over here. He's gonna shuffle, backpedal, and then open up and run. So it's just selecting the, draw the lines that you want, and then click on to change those, uh, change those things that are there. Uh, there was a question about handing off. Coach, we got another one here about uh, uh, executing handoff. Did you already see that? Yeah. So, okay. like, you want to time this thing up. So, like, that looks pretty good for outside zone. The change of possession is what you're looking for. And then you just want to scrub the timer until they're about there. And then click and hold on the guy who has the ball. And then release it to the guy that you want to hand off to. And then there it is. I have those guys hidden. Let me bring them back. I will tell you, when the animations were made, it was for under center. So there may be some goofy shotgun handoffs, like with some wrong hands, but there's some, you know, there's some ways to kind of manipulate things. Uh, but this works for fake handoffs as well. So if I wanted to, I can get rid of this, scrub to it, and then fake handoff. And then just in case you were wondering, you can throw interceptions. This took me about three years to get these guys to put this in. You know, there's those goofy animations that throws behind his back. But he throws it to the defensive guy. That's the important piece. All right. A uh, question here is, uh, can you use it on uh, digital game day? I never used it on game day, NCAA, it's against the rules. Uh, but, it, you know, really there could be some, if you want to remind people of fits and things like that, you know, there could be a lot of value there. Um, you know, that's some of, the, some of the stuff about installing that, and I'll pull something up. Um, you know, I've done some installs that way where it's, you know, full blown, this is how we want to, you know, go through this whole thing. You know, so like you take this, uh, this bunch one, you know, if you know that they're going to run a bunch of bunch and you just want to remind people how to use it, but you can bring the iPad out. It doesn't need it. It once you load it on the internet, you can load it on the internet and then, uh, um, you could go on a plane and you would be able to see it and use it. So that we've done that taking it out to the field. But, you know, quite honestly, we've, we've drawn our scout cards off this. You know, think about how powerful it is to be able to show shifts and trades to a scout team, you know, to line up. You know, this is how you're going to trade. This is how you're going to shift. Um, you know, so the, it's really about the efficiency and being able to create the things that are confusing. You know, Bunch being a good example there. <clears throat> 